So what are we going to talk today? We're going to talk today actually about what your Google Analytics aren't telling you, um, what data it isn't telling you. And I know you might be thinking to yourself right now, how dare this marketeer from Medallia come to us to a Google Analytics conference in Vienna telling us what Google is not uh, uh, telling uh, us. So in fact, just a disclaimer, this, uh, uh, this uh, um, talk is not about uh, uh, if Google Analytics are, is good or bad. Hint, it's good. Um, but, uh, but it's more about how you can take your Google Analytics to the next level. What can you do with it on a high level marketing strategy plan? And this is uh, what we aim to, um, to, to do today. So I'm Dekel, I'm from Medallia. I'm a head of uh, uh, the marketing for Medallia for Digital. And um, let's get started and see um, what's on the agenda today. So we're going to talk about digital transformation, the state of digital, and then understand what is the what be, a, a of the analytics and the why that is missing. So before we get started, um, I want to um, talk a bit about what is digital in uh, 2018. 2018 uh, is, a, is a very important year for digital because the systems are building and um, even if your brand is not competing directly with a, a, a digital disruptor, your users are interacting on digital, on website, on mobile apps, and so on and so forth. So even if you don't have a competitor and the competition is not in the digital field, you must be aware of how the user experience is uh, taking place on digital. So this is Gartner saying uh, two years ago already um, that 50% uh, of the uh, today's CEOs <laughs> expect to see substantial digital transformation in their industries within five years. Meaning that in five years, most of the CMOs today will see their industries totally different and unrecognizable to what it is today. And when it comes to digital transformation, um, we are marketeers, so how do we look at the digital transformation landscape today? It's mostly about the software and the technology that we take in order to understand better our customers, our users. So let's, let's name a few. What do we have and what do we use today in our landscape? So we got A-B testing, right? Um, I believe everyone is doing some kind of A-B testing today. And we got ticketing systems, how we log all the uh, service uh, requests and complaints. We have chat. Chat is a very prominent thing today. Everyone's interacting either with a live agent or they are interacting um, with a, a bot or, or a AI. We got CRM today. This is how sales are managing um, their um, uh, operations. Session recordings to um, which of you uh, who, who don't uh, was not aware of that. So um, we we have technology today to analyze and to track the user's actual session in our website to see where the mouse clicker is going, where is he clicking on, and so on and so forth. And obviously here um, it's a, a not unknown uh, uh, thing that we have web analytics. This is our main kind of um, way we we track and analyze our marketing performance nowadays. So I believe these building blocks are not new to anyone uh, in this room, but these t uh, is actually how technology can come and assist us marketers understand better the, our customers. But you know what? What happens in, in fact, in reality, is totally different. Because these are some stats that we gathered in Medallia, and let's see how do we improve our interactions with users. So for example, we found out that 50% of consumers think that brand can do a better job aligning how they will be preferred to be engaged with. Then 39% of users abandon websites, still abandoning our websites. Um, um, and then there's 67% um, uh, uh, percent, uh, in an average will abandon your shopping cart, you know, for uh, retail and e-commerce business. This is the amazing uh, figure that I found. You know, um, we all have mobile apps, but 95% of users will actually stop using a mobile app within 90 days. So within three uh, months, this is a, an average life cycle of a mobile app. Why can't we get them to stay there, you know? 52% um, of customers likely to engage with, a, uh, um, are less likely to engage with a company with bad uh, mobile experiences. And 70% of uh, companies' uh, website include a self, uh, um, expect to, uh, their website to include a self-service. And finally, last but not least, 
75% of consumers expect a consistent cu a, cu a customer experience on all devices. So the same kind of uh, uh, standard that you have when you walk into a store, you want to, to have this on the website of the brand, you want to have this in social media when you're interacting, and mobile, and so on and so forth. So what does this show us? This shows us we put a lot of technology, we invest in digital transformation, but we still don't get it right. We don't uh, understand um, how customers behave and what are the expectations. So I'm going back to this building block example. You know, We have um, all these kind of tools, a lot of technology, a lot of investment, money, time, effort, you know, and we still don't get it right. Why don't we get it right? Because we don't connect all the dots. We don't connect our analytics uh, uh, enough with C CRM, with chat, with A-B testing, with the ticketing, with all of the systems, uh, all working as a silos, and we cannot get a real picture and understanding. And what is missing here in the middle? So actually, what, what the, the center thing that aligns all of these uh, systems are the digital voice of customer, and th this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, to actually understand what the customer are looking from their point of view and then getting that all across the ecosystem and, and the technology <coughs> stack. So who's, um, with a raise of hands, who's here in a position of uh, marketing? Marketing positions? Okay. Um, and inside marketing, tell me who um, is uh, working with a digital system, one of the softwares that we uh, looked upon? Um, managing their analytics or their CRM or their any other stuff. So you can see that this room is a more or less same uh, um, characteristics, you know, of, of marketeers. And I think that we all share the same challenges and the same kind of pains when it comes to um, digital marketing. And let's name a few, okay, the major uh, things that, that we are challenged by today's world, right? So we don't really understand the customer. We want to understand customer needs. We want to understand how customers behave. And that's very significant. Uh, improve top of the funnel performance, right? We care about things like CPA and CPC and CTR. We're very dedicated to make sure all of our top of the funnel is working right. But it doesn't end there, you know, because we're also, in a marketing position, care about the mid-funnel conversion rate. We want to bring sales opportunities. We want to make sure that the lead that we're bringing follows all the path uh, around. And then we are in charge also of locating the roadblocks and fixing it. We want to understand if a campaign is not working, why is it not working, how can we improve, and, and so on and so forth. And then, obviously, everyone here that has a website, and today's world, everyone, um, want to uh, um, solve the abandonment problem. We want users on our site. We don't want them to leave. Uh, another thing that we are challenged by is the stickiness. We, we care about retention. We want people to come and, and interact and come shop again and, and stay on our site um, for a long period of time. So these are one of the challenges, uh, to be frank with you. But there's also uh, a few opportunities and and gains that we, we gain today in the, in the world of marketing. Marketeers today are more involved in customer loyalty and retention. This is not just sales, you know, we don't, don't just bring the acquisition and hand it over you know, to someone el else in the company. Where overall, we're responsible for the sales funnel. It happened to be that we are working on the top of it, but we are accountable to what happens all the way to, to uh, uh, the bottom of the funnel. And overall, today's marketing is not longer in the sidelines. We are a crucial part of, of, of the business. We're a key player, and, um, and the whole business relies on the success of marketing. So that's a lot of pains and gains. Um, and we tried at Medallia to do even uh, in-depth analysis of, of what are the challenges break down by a channel, OK? So we came up with this uh, nice uh, um, asset we call it the digital marketing cheat sheet. So we created a cheat sheet. This is actually one of our most successful uh, assets on Medallia's website um, that actually goes towards the details and looks at every channel uh, in a marketing job, you know, and what are the KPIs and the goals, and how do we can um, influence and, and improve them in terms of getting feedback. So the right column is like, if we only knew these questions, we would be doing better CTR, 
better CPA, um, and so on and so forth. So t let's take one example, and then people that are interested, you can Google um, Medallia Digital Experience Cheat Sheet on Google, and you can download this uh, asset for free to take uh, with you on your day-to-day -day job. So for example, looking at online display media, we run display and banners, right? And, and uh, our goal mainly is to improve the CTR. We have uh, seen a lot of low click-through rates on the ad, and we don't know what happens with the click-through rate and how can we uh, get more people to click <coughs> on the ad. So we presume, you know, we have our own assumptions um, that the message um, over here, the message of the, of the ads is not so clear or maybe we can offer better uh, things on the creative side um, and maybe it's not relevant so we target the wrong audience. And if we o only knew um, and to ask people um, uh, from a feedback form or a survey, you know, um, why, what do they expect, you know, from the ad? They click on the ad, they come to our landing page. What do they expect and what do they want us to do? That will make a totally difference, right? Because then we know how to go to the creative, go to the brand team and change uh, uh, our ads and make it a better experience. So that's a few examples and we're not gonna get to all of it, but just to name a few channels. We have advertising, we have SEO and SEM, search engine marketing. We have online media. Um, there's uh, coupons and promotions that we run and we want to um, track, obviously, the website itself. We want to increase the conversion rate. Um, and we have, if, if for those of you who have a blog, you know, they have a um, maintaining CTR and CPA from the blog traffic. Um, we have inbound marketing. We have post-purchase and loyalty emails. We have customer support. And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, how, what are the challenges and what do we want to uh, gain from it? Okay. Um, so we understand at some point that the what is not enough. And what does that mean today? So let's like, name a few of our, our, our softwares and tools. You know, we all are using Google Analytics. This is why we're here today, right? So Google Analytics is not enough. Why is it in enough? because it doesn't uh, tell you why the user are moving through funnels. It tells you, you know, the click-through rate, it tells you the conversion rate, it tells you all of the numbers you need to know, but don't count on Google to tell you why, you know? This is up to you, we're very talented marketeers. Now you go and, and, and tell Google um, um, why is it the figures are, are that show on the screen. What about session replay? We talked about that, you know, the, the software that helps you um, track the user journey. So they are working great, you know, they are tracking all of the sessions, all of the users, whatever you target, <laughs> but then you end up with like millions and millions of sessions so you're not gonna watch uh, in front of your computer every day, all, all day long sessions. So how do you know what sessions to, uh, uh, to watch? And basically, when you watch a session, how do you know why the user behaves? So someone is clicking on the wrong button, going to a wrong page, the navigation isn't clear, just like you designed it. You will see that in the session uh, replay, but you never know why. What about A-B test? This is great. You know, A -B, I love A-B test. I do A-B test in my job almost on every campaign, everything I run. Uh, I try different creatives, different messaging, and I test a lot of things. I, I believe all of us test a lot of things, but we know that every time there's one winner, right? So you do an A-B test, you get one uh, uh, performing better, but we, we don't really know why, you know? So, okay, fine, if you duplicate the campaign, you'll, do, you'll take the ad um, that works better. But then what, you know, you have a different campaign, different content, um, different messaging, then you need to do it all over and all over again, you don't really understand. And you know what, the list goes on and on with every uh, stuff will tell you what, but uh, um, the why is missing. So now that we understand that, we want to discover the why behind the what. And how do we do that in Medallia today? So we named a few. Um, we look at this as the yin and the yang of, uh, of marketing because it actually completes itself, you know? It complements one another. So we have on one side analytics, session recording, uh, A-B testing, and more and more, which we value that very much, you know? This is the, the basics of, of good marketing. But then on the other hand, we have the why, which is actually the voice of the customer. If you get both things, the what and the why, you will be able to paint a, a clear picture of your customers. 
So I'm going back to this building block uh, example from before. Um, now I, I named a few uh, of the vendors. Um, I, be I believe some of them uh, you are familiar with, some of them you are working and, and partnering with. And these are the, the actual systems that you are interacting. And why is the digital uh, 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 voice of customer very important? Because this is the way we, we integrate into your existing stack. We don't replace any block, right? We're in the middle and we have interactions with every uh, one of the vendors that you see here today. We can interact both ways, sending feedback to these um, systems and getting the data into um, the voice of customer process. So let's talk a bit about listening to your customers, right? Um, what is a digital voice of customer <laughs> program today? And I, I, I wish to take this definition and highlight the bolded words, okay? So let's see, it's a practice of effectively. What does it mean effectively? We don't survey just for surveys, right? We don't come and do a market research, bring your CEO this thick book, you know, 200 pages of uh, research, and you know, now go do whatever you want. We really want it to be effective in ask, asking what we need, uh, what insights do we need to gain from. And then continuously, this is a not a one-time job. Voice of customer is not a project you do, run for one month, two months, get to the end, to the bottom line, and then continue with your work and routine. This is an ongoing process that you do day to day, um, and, and you keep gaining the feedback and actionizing uh, um, how you can improve. So, and then the last thing, achieve business results, okay? This is, we're getting feedback, not because we want to get the feedback. We're not doing things for nothing, right? We want this to be tied up to your business goals, whatever they are. You know, um, if, if you're looking for increasing revenue, it's if you're looking for um, better conversions, if you're looking to help with a sales funnel, these are the real business results, and this is where you take the feedback to. So what is the approach that um, uh, guides us and our, our clients today? Um, we have a very unique approach of doing voice of customer right. We, are, uh, we have um, put all of our efforts into engaging the right person at the right time with the right content. And what does it mean? We, I, I made a formula for, for us to, to look at it uh, e easily. If you follow this formula, you will see success. And what does it mean? by uh, targeted. You want to have your messaging or your engagement with the, uh, the end user, right, in, in the place that he's looking for. You're not just going to ask a general question on the home page of your website, you know, how is your experience or how are you doing today, right? Th that will be helpful. But if you see a critical place where you see um, blockage or you see pitfalls, this is where you want to target. And then comes the second thing, which is the contextual. You want to relate to that. You will not ask two different users the same question. You want to ask the user the, sec the question that is relevant to them the most. And obviously, we're in a very um, fast-moving world, and digital is creating a lot of disruption, right? So we have to keep it short. We're not like those days, you know, before that people will ask you to uh, answer a questionnaire and then bring you like three pages with uh, 20 questions, you know, because you're not going to complete that. I, I don't do that when I get uh, uh, emails uh, with surveys. But if you ask, you know, you care to say one question, maybe two questions after uh, you, you, you understand the first uh, a question, you want to ask a follow-up question, then most of the people will actually, you, you'd uh, be uh, amazed that most of the people actually reply, you know. So this is the life cycle of digital voice of customer. As we said, it's endless. And we start by engaging, you know, we want to listen to um, uh, the feedback uh, coming from the customer. We, we um, continue with optimizing it. What does optimizing mean? We want to take all of the feedback that we collect and to put themes to it. We need to understand what is the topic. If, you know, some people complain about the prices, but a lot of more people complain about the uh, selection of your product, then you know where to invest. We're, we're looking at uh, the amount of feedback, we're looking at the types of feedback, and we're trying to paint a picture of what needs to be fixed. Then when we know wh what to fix, it's kind of easy, but we want to make sure that everyone in the organization, not just marketing, 
goes back and fix it. And this is how we activate different parts, sales teams, we activate uh, customer uh, support, and, uh, and even uh, executive management. The last thing and the most important is the improve. Since this is a, a circle and an, uh, an ongoing process, we want to make sure that we learn the insights, uh, improve, uh, close the loop with the customers, and constantly improve. And this is the way we can actually see an impact on the customer experience a long time. So we talked about um, the, the voice of customer as a program, but what do we really get out of it, right? Um, so we said that vo uh, voice of customer program done right will actually impact the business, not just the marketing or not just your campaigns. And how do we see that? So here's a few use case uh, examples from some of our customers, and uh, we will dive into a, a few case studies uh, later on today. But you can see that the variety of use cases is not one you know, uh, use case fits all. Everyone gets um, um, totally different um, um, results using these systems. So while some of the brands prioritize their investment cleverly, right? Other ones get high conversion rates. There, there are companies that want to um, tackle the call center, you know? And call centers are very expensive uh, uh, thing today um, to answer calls. And that reflects on money, right? So if you, you get less calls and people can do their own self-service, you save the, the company a lot of uh, money. So that's the variety of use cases that uh, define a good uh, voice of customer program. And how do you actually start today? This is not a thing, you know, that you say, okay, let's have it in the plans and yearly plans. We'll, we'll go next year, we'll think about maybe doing it. You can actually start asking for feedback today. Let's see how it looks like. We took a sales funnel, you know, a typical sales funnel that I believe all of us have a very similar type. And we see what can we ask today? How can we start collecting the data today? Okay, so let's begin this journey. Okay, you, you, you begin on a very um, um, high level overview, of product pages, collections, you know, and you want to ask people, you know, what do they find there? What, do they, um, what are they looking for? Right, you go down the funnel, you proceed, you got to search for a product on the website, right? You got to the product gallery, you would like to understand what people are looking, what <laughs> appeals to them more or not, and if they don't find it, uh, how can you improve that same page? Down the funnel, you got to, to a product page, okay? You selected a product, opened the page, got into the page. What information does your customer look on that page? Okay, continue. We're adding that to, to the cart. Um, this is uh, a, good si a good sign, you know, if your user adds uh, a product to the cart. Now he needs to choose the size, the color, the quantity. Of, of the, the user. So you, you might have well uh, asked about it. What about support? You know, you have people during the process, during the funnel, going on the chat, going to FAQ pages, and so on and so forth. You would like to understand if the service that is giving on your website is, is decent enough, right? So you ask, if, if it's a low score, for example, you ask how you can improve. Why, why figure out, you know, yourself? Just ask um, if someone had a bad uh, uh, experience on chat, how can you improve your chat? If it's good, then, then what, what um, worked out the most, you know, so you know how to invest. Login page, okay, um, same goes here. You want to understand about the process. You go to my accounts page. So in my account, you have a lot of things, you know, um, confusing for some, some would say, and you want to understand if, if the account page is built up correctly. Down to the shopping cart, um, you, you want to understand if it's clear, right? Um, and you got to a payment, okay? This is, this is a crucial point in the journey. A lot of people abandon when it comes to actually paying, you know? So you want to, want to understand what the satisfaction from the payment is. Um, do they accept all the cards, credit cards? Uh, is it easy, you know? <laughs> Shipping option, another way we, we found from a lot of our customers that a lot of people do want the product, but the shipping terms and conditions are not good enough, the supply is not good, and the time that it takes for, for it to ship. So that's uh, a few of the example questions that you can ask over there. And then you got to review the order, one step before the end, right? Um, you want to make sure that if we, you got so far, you don't want to drop in that stage, right? That's very important. 
Then talking about social media uh, and, uh, and promo codes and discounts, this is your way to attract people. You want to see that you gave the right discount in terms of the people really appreciate that discount or that promo. And finally, congratulations, you got to the, to the end game, right? So you got a, 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 a transaction completed successfully. And that doesn't end there, you know? You send an email, confirmation, you have a message, you want to understand the whole process. And here, for example, if you have to ask a person one thing, just name one thing that, was, uh, that, that, was, uh, that you wanted to change in the whole pro process, you will actually understand, looking at the whole funnel, where you need to invest and where do you need to change. So let's talk about a, a bit about how do you work with your analytics? How do you embed feedback that we just uh, discovered <laughs> and we just collected into your analytics? And there's three ways we can offer to do that with today's technology. One is, um, is, is to embed into analytics or to send to your analytics, to your Google Analytics account, the interactions and the engagements <laughs> the users had on your site with your surveys. So you know, um, we send events, you know? Event can be a form was displayed, you know, a pop-up, or, or, or a box of a, of a survey was, uh, um, was sent to the, to the user. Can be clicked on a submit button, he, he sent us the, uh, the feedback. He can click on the X button or the close button to close this, uh, um, this uh, survey. So these things can be actually inside your events in your Google Analytics. And then you can analyze that uh, on a high level. You can also use Google Segments to target survey. And this is one of the, the greatest things that we do interacting with analytics, right? So you can actually take um, your segment, whatever they are, you know, existing customers, loyalty membership, whatever you segmented in Google, and send that back so that we can actually target them with a survey, the personalized survey for them. The last way we can uh, work with uh, analytics is by sending the actual quantity uh, score of the, uh, of, of the feedback. So if you are measuring net promoter score, NPS, or CSAT, which is a quantitative way of having feedback, you can send that feedback, the average NPS on a specific page, to the funnel in Google Analytics, and then you can see what steps have better NPS, what steps uh, in, in the funnel, or what pages you should uh, be uh, worried about and improve. So if that's not enough, we came up with uh, uh, a better a way of, uh, of looking at analytics with feedback together. We call it at Medallia, Experience Optimizer. And what we do over there is take on one hand the funnel, this is your funnel from your analytic. Whatever you set in analytics, we take that from analytics and at the same time, on the right hand, we put together the, uh, the quality and the feedback and the quantity scores of your feedback. So you can actually see every step of the funnel, what is the average scores, how is the segment uh, distribution. If you have a uh, session recording uh, solution, you can see the actual sessions. So you know with what sessions to view based on the uh, feedback and uh, performance. And last but not least, you can also get a themes, a word cloud of um, the actual positive or negative sentiment of your feedback. So this is really amazing, guys. And now let's talk about how people are using customer experience and digital and what are they doing today. So we'll look at, uh, uh, at a few uh, of our case studies. Um, we're working with Electrolux and uh, specifically with the Frigidaire brand, okay? And they had a challenge, okay? The guys at Electrolux had a challenge. They thought uh, that they knew their audience very well. So this is uh, actually an interesting story, you know? They, they, they're selling refrigerators, right? And they thought that most of the people that are coming to the website are interested in buying a fridge. Makes sense, right? You know, you have a refrigerator, you wanna buy a fridge. And they shaped the content uh, before so that you have all the information that you need in order to buy a refrigerator. But they still were, weren't sure, you know, that this is a right, you know, this is a good assumption, but that's not really, not a proven thing to, to, to be, you know, to, to know. So they started to put a feedback, you know, they asked people on the website, you know, tell us a bit about um, the, uh, the feedback, uh, a bit about what you're looking for, what are you, how, how is the navigation on the site, 
what are the, um, the things you expect to see in our website. And very quickly, you know, this is a matter of weeks, they got to an outcome and they were surprised by the feedback that they got. It happened to be that most of Electrolux users were not actually looking to buy a new fridge. They already have a fridge there at home. They were looking for uh, support, they were looking for additional parts, you know, uh, they wanted to change it or they had to fix stuff. And there were existing users that Electrolux didn't know. With a simple question about um, uh, the feedback about um, what they're looking for on the site, help them understand. And it didn't end there, I can tell you. Electrolux go back and change their website so that they have more information about um, how you can get support to your refrigerator, how you can add, uh, buy extras and upsell to new parts. So that, that is, uh, uh, um, in a nutshell, you know, how you understand the customer. Let's look at a different brand. This is a city beach from Australia. They're having a surfboard company. Um, and, they, uh, uh, and they're very, well, they're an e-commerce website. They, they sell you on the website, actually, the surfboards. And they wanted to go beyond analytics. They want to know exactly how they can take their, uh, um, their funnels and improve them and create more sales. So what did they do? They integrated feedback data in their web analytics, just like we showed before, and started to go step by step in their funnel, asking questions, amending, tipping it, changing it, um, creating new content to suit the, the customer needs. And what happened? The, the result was, was shocking. You know, we're talking about business, how you impact the business, you know? So see this, they had 30% rise in online sales and 25% increase in the conversion rate. This is not a 1%, you know, kind of stuff. This is actually impacting the whole business of, of City Beach. And the last example we're gonna have today is about Eurostar, this, uh, the train uh, uh, company. And they were looking at different things. They wanted to, their challenge was different than the ones that I showed. They wanted to um, understand um, um, what people are looking for when they're uh, booking. So if you want to look at it, um, they wanted to create segments for their, um, uh, their ticket selling uh, uh, for train rides, okay? And they, they uh, decided to segment they had, uh, I think, uh, uh, th uh, three or four segments, and they wanted to know uh, the factors, what uh, each segment's looking for. So for example, think about it. You're going on a holiday, you want to train for the holiday. I believe you're having your family with you, you're buying tickets, versus a uh, different uh, businessman. You know, he wants to go to, uh, um, to a business meeting, and his needs are totally different. They knew about that, but they didn't know really what does that affect. What time do you book? Do you book a time, you know, just before the train or you well in advance? You don't know uh, um, how many tickets you're going to buy. And they wanted to have this in order. And the outcome was that uh, using the feedback, they uh, was able to serve every segment with their relevant uh, um, data. So for someone who books ahead of time, they know how to motivate him. And for last minute kind of train tickets, um, they, they had a different content personalized for them. So let's get started. How do you start today? We're saying we you can start today. There's a seven step process that each and every one of you can start as of you, you coming out uh, the room today. And it's very simple to plan a program. What you need to look at is the business goals, okay? You want to see what are your goals, what do you want to achieve with the feedback? Then you go to the metrics, you know? You're, we are all you know, measured by um, sort of metrics and you want to understand how do you improve X or Y and tie that up with the, um, the feedback that you, you're gonna collect. Then knowing the persona, this is important in any, anything that we do today, knowing who's your uh, persona, who, who are you targeting. Moving forward to the touch points, you want to understand where do you want to inter interact? Do you want to interact only on the website? Do you want to interact on the, on the mobile website? Do you want to interact on the mobile app? And then how do you engage? What type of engagement do you want? Do you want to intercept? Do you want to have a feedback button? We'll talk about that uh, in a minute. Um, and then the data integration. You need to plan your architecture. How do you want to, what system talks with each system? You know, do you want to send the CRM so the sale people, when they make a call, uh, they understand or, 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 or the analytics, whatever. And last but not least, you want to plan, how do you plan to close the loop? Are you gonna wor work with your sales team? Are you gonna work with your product team? What feedback are you sending? What the cadence? And so on and so forth. So we talked about feedback and about analytics, but let's see a, a bit of numbers, right? How, how this is uh, some benchmarks that, that's always good to look at, okay? So there's two ways of engagement, 
engagement. One could be a passive engagement. You're putting a button, you know, and you expect people to click and provide feedback. Well, the second thing, a method is to have an intercept, to get into a specific time and show a survey. So this is how it looks like today. Okay, we talked about we can have a, a nice button, all customizable, and we can have it also in the uh, mobile app. This is what we call always on. And why is it always on? Just like we say, it, it projects a message that the business is ready to collect feedback. We, as a, as a brand, want to hear our customers. And the door is open 24-7, you know, with digital today, to provide feedback. But in, uh, in, in, in the addition to that, there's a few other benefits, you know, that you can use that instead of uh, calling the, the call center. And uh, one of the nicest things about it is that you can prevent bad scoring on social media. No one wants, you know, um, their brand to be rated low or like getting their page on Facebook or LinkedIn, you know, or a lot of things, uh, uh, comments. When it comes to uh, TripAdvisor or, or a lot of other apps that rating, we don't want to do that. And we want to pre prevent that before. So talk to us first, you know, before you go to Facebook and write a nasty thing about uh, uh, our brand, Come to us first. Let's see if we can solve your concern or, or your issue. But this consideration here is that we can fall into a passive bias. What is a passive bias? Passive bias is that thinking about who is going to fill a, a survey from his own kind of like uh, um, at their own time. Usually people that want to com complain. And looking at all of this feedback will, will um, send a message to the brand that, well, we're doing really bad. You know, we're just getting negative. No one, I didn't. Uh, meet any person that goes to a brand and say, listen, guys, you're amazing, you know, I like you, Nike, I like you, uh, whatever, Apple, whatever. Um, so we want to pr uh, prevent the, the passive uh, uh, bias. So what's the stats? People that served uh, um, uh, to, to have a, a button on your website, um, we saw that 0.02% will actually send feedback. That's 200 feedback that you're gonna collect on every one million page views your website has. Um, and this is still low, right? We can always aim to improve that. And how would we improve that? We intercept. This is a proactive approach, okay? So you're not waiting for a person to click on the button, fill a survey and send you. You are intercepting them at the right time, either in the web or in the mobile, and, uh, and, and you're getting their kind of uh, um, feedback. This has a lot of benefits. First of all, you don't get passive because you can get also um, good feedback if it's <laughs> in a good place. And also, um, um, you, can, uh, you can manage to collect the right uh, feedback at every point. This is the benefits of uh, intercept. While as there's also other uh, consideration that you need to, to make sure that you need all the data correct. You need the, your parameters from analytics, you need the segment, and you need to set it up. But when it's set it up, it works amazing. So see the numbers. Um, from the 0.02, we improved to 0.6. Okay, so 0.6% uh, um, uh, of people that uh, get interse uh, intercepted will actually send their feedback to you. But you know what? This is not enough. We want to improve this. We, we it, you know playing with a copy, playing with uh, uh, um, uh, the buttons. You saw, see, see this example, I don't know if you can uh, see, but it says, you know, instead of submit, sure, dude, you know, and instead of uh, uh, no feedback, no, um, I gotta hit the slopes, you know? You just change a bit and tweak your ads, just like you do in, in any creative. It actually jumps to 1%. So you see, this is, uh, uh, this is even better conversion rate. And finally, if we want to do a really good job, uh, uh, and in and, and, and some occasions, I must say, you can get up to 6%. How do you do that? You just skip the invitation. Instead of going, hello, sir, do you want to uh, fill in the survey and then yes or no, you actually already tell uh, him the first question or ask the first question over here. So you got a minute, you know what? Don't take a survey, just tell me what the grade that you want to give me. What's the number of your satisfaction, you know? Um, and by doing that, you actually multiply by 10 times your conversion rate getting uh, feedback. So before we end, uh, let's talk a bit about mobile because this is the wor <laughs> word today. Um, and let's see the breakdown of uh, what are people doing on the mobile. This is a study from two years ago, okay? So things are even, even reinforced today. But you see all of these um, use cases 
for mobile uh, phones. And, and, and the, the findings are, are very, very important uh, to marketeers today. Why is that important? Why do you need to invest in your mobile? So first of all, when it comes to usage, um, there's um, more people using mobile phones in fact, then using the desktop, we're always thinking about website, we're thinking about the computer, the laptop, whatever, but actually most of your websites are, are served on the mobile phone, so you need to invest in that. What about mobile apps? Mobile apps is interesting. We found that 90% of people using their phones are actually on the apps itself. It's not just you open a, a browser and go Google search something and go to a website. You're, you're doing it most of the times with the apps that you downloaded. And this is why it's important to think about how do you put your CX strategy in a mobile app. So finally, we can see the, the full picture that more and more of our users are interacting with us on a mobile phone. Um, and this is actually a point to take out from here that doing a good CX <coughs> is not just doing thinking about a, a desktop, thinking about all of the digital channels that you have. You have um, the, de the, the desktop, you have the mobile phones, you have mobile apps, and this is how you create holistically a good customer experience on all of the channels. 